All right, so um, case we have here right now, a young patient comes in with chest pain that is pleuritic. Pleuritic means it hurts to breathe. It's sharp and sudden onset. On the EKG, he has tachycardia. His heart was 117. No real risk factors. Only risk factor, I guess, is mom had lung cancer, just recently died. So, you know, it kind of seems a story like it might be anxiety, might be stress, or what's aggravating him. But he said he was fine until about an hour or two prior to presentation when sudden onset of sharp chest pain. So the EKG has some very characteristic findings that I want to talk about just because it's, it's, it's good to, to have and to know kind of what to look for. Um, the most, um, the reason we do an, an EKG in this kind of patient is to rule out the really bad thing, acute MI obviously, so SC segment elevations. But in a young patient with sharp chest pain, you also worry about pericarditis. The findings you're going to see in pericarditis are diffuse ST segment elevation. So sometimes you'll call it a STEMI and then it's not because it's diffuse. The other things you can see is PR depressions, which are the PR segments actually down compared to the TP segment. You can see um, peak T waves, we can also be seeing pericarditis and things like that. In this particular patient, what we end up seeing in him, and I'll pass this along for you guys to see, is a deep S way in lead one, so when S in lead one, you see a Q wave in lead three. A Q wave is only pathologic if it's one third of the height of the QRS or if it's wider than one tiny little box. Otherwise, it's not really a Q wave, it's just a, a, a negative reflection on that EKG. And then a T wave inversion in lead three. So S1, Q3, T3 is a characteristic finding not just of this particular diagnosis, it actually should be acute core pulmonality. Uh, so anything that leads to hard-sided right surgery can give you that characteristic findings on the EKG, along with the tachycardia. Um, and that should prompt you to think about pulmonary embolism. That should be, because we, we look for it in every EKG, we think about pulmonary embolism, but we rarely see it. I see it about once or twice a year, so here's one of those. Doesn't mean he has a PE. There are other things that give you a core, acute core pulmonality. One of them will be, uh, bronchospasm, acute bronchospasm, or acute um, tightening of the airways can give you that. Um, a pneumothorax can do that too. Um, and acute pulmonary hypertension can do that too. So there are other things that can do it, but if you see S1, Q3, you have to rule out P, which is why this gentleman is waiting on his CT scan. CT scans are not 100%. But they're pretty much close to there, 98, 99% for big pulmonary central embolism. Tiny little peripheral embolisms are missed. So if you really think they have a PE, technically you have to do a, um, uh, an arteriogram, but not just a CT arteriogram. We actually put like in a cath lab a look at the pulmonary flow. But we rarely do that in true practice. We just go by the CT scan. If there's no PE, then there's no PE. Um, and I guess that's it. So sinus tachycardia is the more a common finding for somebody with a PE, but but most of the time with PE you got no findings. That that's the most common abnormal finding is sinus tachycardia, but m most EKGs are normal actually. So and then S1 Q3 is a more characteristic for acute core pulmonality, and that's it. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you.